Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Eat, Smoke, Drink. Today, I am very excited actually. Just assume that every time I film, I'm excited. Because um, today I am, well, legitimately today I'm excited to review um, this Ben React single cast bottling. Um, why I'm excited are two reasons. One, it's a 1988 30 year old bottling of Ben React. Um, of Ben React. And two, it is from what they call a Tukai cask. Tukai is also spelt as Tukaji, but Tukai. So a little background on Ben React, it's a space side. It's owned by the same owners as Glendronic and uh, Glenglasser. So they have a rich pedigree of heavily sherried and um, wine casks when it comes to their whiskies. Um, quintessentially, so I say, quintessential space side sherried whiskies is pretty much their specialty. But what's exciting today, extra exciting, is the Tokay cask is something exceptionally rare when it comes to whiskey bottling. So Tokay is from Hungary. The area is Tokay in Hungary. Tokay is a very, very specific regional wine. It is extremely specific in its production because um, it's a noble rot wine. So um, to give you a little bit of background on it, noble rot, um, the, the grapes gets infected with a particular fungus on the vine it dries out a little bit and it becomes like a raisin on the vine and then they make that into a um, into into a wine fortified in the barrel just like you would port just like you would um, sherry it's a fortified wine and then they use it for this particular whiskey so if you haven't heard of Tokay wine before that's because it is not the most usual thing to have whiskies in so this is cask 4422. This is 179 of 218 30-year-old Tokay Hogshead. Let's get nosing. First thing I notice is, man, that color is so dark. I mean, you can see it all the way from there. It is so dark, and when I, um, you can't see in the camera, but it is so syrupy. It is so syrupy. The legs just there. Oh, wow. The smell is so unique. I have not really had many whiskies like this before. Oh my goodness. I'm slightly aroused. I mean, it's just... The smell is something else. It's like... It cannot be explained what the smell is like. And I'm gonna try and do that right now. Right and the smell is brown sugar. Just brown, a dark, dark demer, dem, demerara brown sugar, like a really dark, <clears throat> raw cane sugar. It's got a hint of caramel and a hint of vanilla in there. But that's pretty much the normal smell. So it's got a really, really, a really unusual earthiness to it. A really unusual earthiness to it. It is like um, taking a bowl of raisins, soaking them in water, making a puree and then condensing it into a syrup. You can really smell that noble rot wine. You imagine getting a noble rot wine and then mixing it with whiskey. It's kind of like that, but... Oh, that earthiness is just... I've, I've never actually smelt a whiskey like this. Um, I mean, it's a very rare thing. I mean, yes, single barrels can be quite you know, unique in its own way, but this is so super unique. Earthy, slight irony smell, like a rusty smell. No sulfur at all, but it has been opened a while, so that could have gone, and I'm not sure if Takai has a sulfur note to it like Sherry does. It's got a fungal smell to it, almost like a, the, the faint waft of blue cheese. Cinnamon. Heavy cereal notes as well, is what I'm getting. I'm getting a lot of cereal notes. Plum jam. It's that coppery smell. Oh, wow. I I can just nose this all day. I can just nose this all day. And sorry about the creaking of the umbrella here. But hey, that's what you get when it's a windy day. But yeah, I can just smell this all day. I'm getting a bit of clay. Christmas cake spice, but it's slightly different. It's got a funk to it. It's got a distinct funk to it, and I can't put my finger on it, but it's got a distinct funk to that whiskey. But let's try it with water. 
Okay, so with water, with water the sweetness, the sweetness comes through a lot more. The funk subsides a little bit with water. Oh wow. Look, the overwhelming flavor is still there, but with water, the sweetness does come out more and the funk subsides a little bit. The metallic, the metallic is a little bit more pronounced. But generally speaking, it's very similar, just a little bit more sweet with the water. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to taste it. Oh wow. I, uh, wow. Ooh. Comparing the sweetness of the smell, the taste does not translate to an uber uber sweetness as well. Like, so yes, it is sweet. It is on the sweeter side of whiskey. Of course, it is. I mean, it's a it's a sweet wine to begin with, a sweet fortified wine. But it's actually not as sweet as some PX casks out there. It's got a relatively savory herbal note to it. When I say herbal, I'd probably say a slight licorice herbal it's definitely got an earthiness to it like a sarsaparilla and surprisingly the texture of the whiskey is not it doesn't taste as heavy as it does smell it's not as sweet as some glendronics out there the smell is so complex the smell is just everywhere everything all at once but the taste is actually relatively restrained I'm quite surprised there is a slight sourness to it that is quite rare with whiskies that could be from the Takai there's a slight sourness to it um, like almost like a unripe stone fruit but it's I'm getting heavy tannin in there I'm getting a fungal taste in there. Like when I say tannin, I'm, I'm th thinking like a, a tea tannin, like an oolong tea tannin, deep, um, deep, slight bitterness tannin. The sweetness is actually relatively subdued for something that smells so syrupy and sweet. Earthiness is there. It's got a dirtiness to it. It's fragrant, a little floral right in the back. But the finish is not super, super long. The finish is not overly complex. It doesn't smack you in the face and, um, and, and bitch slap you. So that's a shame. That's a shame because the smell is absolutely amazing. The taste is extremely, extremely amazing. But the finish is just lacking a little bit. It could be a little bit more. It could stay a little bit more. But let's try the whole water. Okay, see, with water, the bitterness comes up a lot more with the tannin, the sour comes up a lot more. It actually pronounces the flavor. I would say right now that I would vote for no water straight away from that, straight away I'm judging it right now. Without water, the intensity of everything is there um, and it's more integrated without water. So I'll, I vote no water. And it's just the, the interesting thing is like, you know, watch my reviews. Um, I'm never going to tell you, you should do this, you should do that. In my opinion, it's more integrated. This one here, this, the flavors tend to separate a lot, a lot more. Um, and that is what it comes down to. And maybe you like that. So of course, I always say try it with water and judge from there. But with wood water, bitterness comes through more. Herbal notes come through more. Tannin is definitely a lot more bitter. But it's not as sweet. It's amazing. The smell, I would presume the smell is like drinking, uh, eating a, sp a spoonful of golden syrup or maple syrup, but it's not. The smell is so sweet, so sickly, but the taste is actually relatively savory and not too sweet um, at all. So that's a really interesting thing about it. Whiskey, oh, sorry, cigar pairings for this particular one. 
I would say it's a 30 year old and it's not peated and it's not in your face so I would say be careful what you pair it with something light something light in smoke a natural maybe a Padron natural um, or maybe um, a light Cuban cigar maybe a Bolivar maybe a, um, a Cohiba Siglo um, so you can really taste the the, 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 the flavors and the underlying flavors of this particular whiskey because it's not oily it's not an oily whiskey it's not a waxy whiskey so you can easily drown it with something thank you for joining me today um, for another review at Eat Smoke Drink until then make sure you eat your smoke and your drink